Hi. <laughs> Here we are. Uh, ready for almost ready for our ninth uh, uh, live stream. Um, glad to see all of you, or or at least see your comments uh, over here on our uh, new live stream. Uh, please tell us from where uh, you are connecting uh, to to our stream today, uh, both on Facebook and uh, on, on YouTube. And uh, as usual, we encourage you to ask any questions uh, you have about our current stream, maybe about uh, some other things as well. Um, we'll try to answer the, answer them. Maybe maybe some some of the questions would be out of the area of our expertise, and then we'll probably uh, try to find experts and answer the questions next time. But anyway, that's how it goes, and it's it's much more fun when you have. Uh, uh, some questions and uh, opportunity to talk to to the viewers of the live stream. Uh, my co-host Pavel is uh, finishing some preparations right now. <laughs> he joins us from Moscow as usual. Hi, Pavel. Hi. I just wanted to be able to. Well, what happened? Oh, that... we, we, we we hear some that, some that, old, that, old that's our podcast <laughs> in the background. Yeah, I just wanted to be able to post co uh, comments like links that we discuss, etc. So uh, okay, so now I'm fully ready. I'm all yours. Hi. Uh, as you can see, I'm um, prepared, prepared for for, for well, today. Prepared I for have today. Bo both a seasonal background and a topical t-shirt. So, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Definitely. So, Perfect. Uh, lo lo uh, lo lots, lots of gold today. I'm, Let's do that. I, I'm boring today. <laughs> I have our logo, but well, it's black, <laughs> so also <laughs> depressing. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm Stepan, as usual, I'm uh, joining uh, the, the live stream and our podcast from Versailles, from France. Uh, uh, hi again, uh, we already have a comment on Facebook, uh, Dali Sayers uh, uh, says uh, they are joining from Dallas, Texas. Uh, I'm not sure uh, anybody anybody commented uh, uh, before that they are joining from Texas, so that's probably the first one. And uh, uh, David Sousa. Uh, from Brazil, currently living in Slovenia, a bookbinder who works with, uh, makes uh, replicas of medieval bindings. Uh, he, he also joined us on on, uh, uh, on YouTube. So there are some viewers there, and uh, we'll, we'll ho we hope uh, uh, we have some questions uh, during our uh, podcast. So uh, we we announced our main topic uh, for for today, but before that, we are going to discuss some other things, and uh, well, some of them were also announced in the description of, of the video. Uh, we are going to start with a box making co competition experiment that uh, was launched by uh, by the bookbinding out of the box project uh, uh, by uh, Ben Elbel uh, and then his colleagues. And uh, uh, the, these are final days of voting. You have only a couple of days uh, left for, for, for watching. We will show you uh, these boxes and uh, talk uh, talk a bit about them. Uh, then uh, we have uh, this uh, uh, Halloween themed uh, um, bindings dedicated to uh, human skin book bindings. And uh, well, and also I prepared some information about uh, bookish and uh, uh, language related objects from the uh, uh, new movie Dune uh, by Denis Villeneuve uh, uh, and uh, Pavel also has got some uh, something to show oh he, he he's got something to show dedicated to uh, human skin bindings uh, uh, so yeah it should be uh, in my case actual human skin bindings <laughs> we need to say that the <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the more contemporary ones are inspired by the ones I'm going to show. So, yeah, a lot of positivity today. Uh, as usual, we invite you to uh, check the links under the description of the video, uh, join us on Facebook, on YouTube, uh, follow us everywhere. I don't know, uh, join us as supporters on Patreon. Uh, money we get from our supporters on Patreon are really crucial for us because they allow us uh, to pay for for editing of the podcasts uh, of Facebook and this podcast and uh, I know there was a bit of a pause uh, recently with uh, publishing new episodes uh, I've been uh, uh, a bit busy and uh, our uh, previous editor uh, stopped working for us so we had to uh, arrange uh, a new editor and uh, she already started uh, doing her, her job and uh, 
Uh, she sent me the first episodes today, so I hope uh, before the end of the week we will continue publishing uh, podcasts. And uh, well, anyway, uh, please join the crowd on on Patreon. Uh, so let's dive in. I guess uh, uh, discuss uh, a bit uh, about the expanding sleep sleep case competition. Uh, Pavel will take over talking for a moment, and I will set up the uh, this stuff to show you. Uh, so ben, ben Elbo is a long time uh, friend of our podcast. He's been here twice, I think. At least. At least, yeah. So uh, he's, uh, uh, he's a bookbinder with an international story be behind him. He's worked in, uh, uh, in France, in England, and in... Uh, 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 in the Netherlands. In Germany. Well, currently he is, he is in the Netherlands, yeah, but originally he is from France. Uh, he worked in Germany and in the UK, and uh, yeah, currently he's, he's living uh, and he has his uh, studio in, in Harlem in, uh, in the Netherlands. And, and his tutorials are, uh, are, uh, are something to admire. So if you, if you haven't seen them yet, I highly recommend to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, yeah. Could you check if uh, the uh, links I'm posting to YouTube show up? Um, did you post anything? I, I don't see anything. Yeah, I'll... yeah I, I just posted it, but you told me that for them to appear, you need to yeah. make me a moderator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like give, give. And you are, yeah, it appeared. It's, it, it just was a, was a delay, um, but uh, now it appeared there, so everything is fine. And, and, we, uh, and we have a, 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 we have someone joining us from Donegal in Ireland, Gr somebody named Graffula Productions. I like the and, name. And, and during during a holiday, <laughs> so that's nice. That's dedication. Uh, so um, the uh, there are uh, as far as I remember, there are um, there were something like thirty uh, applicants to the competition, uh, thirty one or something like that. So, uh, I, I posted some time ago uh, that uh, there were uh, 10, uh, uh, 10 uh, applicants to the competition, and I was corrected uh, by, by one of the persons who, who is in charge of the, of the competition, and uh, uh, there were m more of them, but 10 out of these 30 or 31 uh, boxes were chosen by the committee to, uh, as, as the best applicants, and uh, you can vote for uh, these uh, um, slipcase boxes. Uh, and what exactly were the rules? Uh, is there like just one category? What were the submissions? Uh, so it's, it's, it's the first competition uh, bookbinding out of the box launched and the, the premise was that uh, they wanted to uh, find solutions for uh, having a box that can be expandable. So it can uh, a whole different amount of objects inside of it uh, depending on the you know current conditions and uh, uh, maybe Adding some some stuff, for example, when you are when you have uh, like with Ben, El ben Elba's project, you have uh, all these tutorials, and you want to add more and more over the years, and uh, so you either have to to make a new box uh, once in a few years, or you can make an expandable box. And uh, as far as I remember, there there was a project um, uh, at the uh, Dutch. Uh, Book, Guild of uh, uh, Bookbinding or Society of Bookbinders, uh, Stichting and um, They uh, some time ago they had a project dedicated to uh, making a box for for their uh, a quarterly. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's quarterly or half a year. For, anyway, for their magazine, and uh, uh, this uh, this box design has had, had this uh, 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 semicircular uh, cutouts on on the sides uh, uh, that were quite fitting for the design of the magazine and uh, uh, the box itself was quite simple but uh, uh, looks pretty pretty nice but well then uh, when you when you fill uh, one of the boxes uh, you need to make another one to for, for the next uh, I don't know a couple of years or several years uh, so here the idea was to uh, make a box that will allow expanding over the time uh, so yeah and and there is in, in the text uh, one more correction uh, so it, it uh, uh, it, it's written so it was uh, uh, with great pleasure that we received 22 submissions from around the world. Well, okay, <laughs> so here we are, 22 submissions. Um, 
I guess uh, we'll uh, how 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 should the box proceed? Uh, there are ten boxes. We will just show you all of them, and uh, there are also some videos showing the boxes from different sizes, sides, and uh, we'll we'll run these short videos, and then we'll just continue, and probably. Pavel will be reading while I'll be flipping uh, beside the uh, uh, between the uh, the photos because it's hard to do both <laughs> at the same time. Uh, there is a short description. You can probably read it on your own, but uh, anyway. So uh, there are no names here, obviously, because it's it's a competition and uh, you have to vote anonymously. Um, and uh, here is the first entrance. My slipcase should be a comfortable and safe home for tutorials as uh, such they are binding out of the box as referred uh, to on, on the back one completely extended and yeah, there is this uh, photo from, from the back side <laughs> when the book is completely extended. So it's, it's it extends only twi almost twice. So, so, uh, so it's a telescopic uh, box. Uh, yeah. uh, the upper part fits inside the uh, the lower part, and uh, it can uh, uh, slide between it. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. That, that's interesting. That's true. And the uh, um, here is short video. I'll probably flip through it because you can. Check it uh, on on your on your own if you want. In in uh, a bit later when we finish our live stream. Then that that's a really nice box. I could I could use uh, uh, one of those. <laughs> So the second uh, one. Let, is... let, let me read the second one. The outer case is made from a one millimeter Gemini millboard. The inner walls are fitted with a W-shaped spring that allows the inside space to expand and contract according to the number of books inserted. Yeah, here is the spring, and here is the expanding and contracting in in, in inside of the box. Let's see. Here. Yeah, sitting, no, sitting, sitting how, some. How, could you explain to me again how it works? Because I don't quite. It's just, it. it's just because the, because there is as, as far as I understand that because I obviously I haven't seen the this box in the in the real life uh, in real life uh, uh, due to uh, the because it has a spring inside. Uh, it can be uh, the the inner walls can uh, go uh, wider and uh, um, thinner, oh, so, so narrower. The so, so outer walls. Uh, the outer uh, outer walls are rigid. Are fixed. Yeah. 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 Well, and the, 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 this is fun. This is a, a very much an engineering yeah, competition. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and here is the next structure, Pavel. If you can join us. So, the slipcase can stand on its own, offers a minimum of 30 mm and a maximum of 60 mm wide storage space, has no protruding parts, and a few more specialties that I will describe below. Close and pro probably probably our, our viewers should, uh, should go and read the description in full on, on their own, because it's, it's a long description. And, um, well, it is a complicated structure. Yeah. It it it's it's definitely it uh, it also definitely has uh, a lot of uh, space on the, on the outside. Uh, 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 well, the walls of the box are sort of uh, are this this thick structure, and uh, uh, you can see uh, the box expanded on the left photo, and uh, the the walls still stay uh, as as uh, as wide as thick as they were initially. So this allows so, the box so, so to expand, the, uh, but. So these ribbons are, uh, are, the, uh, are the key part here, right? Oh, oh, yeah. I see. So you expand it and then you fix it. You fix uh, it with the ribbons. With the ribbons. Yeah. Uh, 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 looks like a, a, tu uh, a tourist bag, something like that, something that can change its volume depending on just 
how much you're prepared to take with you. Yeah, yeah, probably. Um, okay. Oh, so, so this is a fascinating one. Expanding the next one, that's the first one. Made yeah, okay. of propylene, yeah, uh, uh, by the technique of 3D printing. <laughs> the operation will be explained in the video. Let's see that. Yeah, 3D printing uh, uh, is used more and more in book, book binding and book arches, as, as we can see. Are you concerned? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I think I always find something new to, to offer you. <laughs> but I'm glad to see this technology, uh, you know, finding more ground and more more use uh, within the bookbinders. So this is basically more like furniture. Uh, look, look, look at that. It's it's a fully re a rigid structure made of two halves that fit inside inside each other. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that... like 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 telescopic furniture. You mean like like a table? Yeah, uh, or, li or like those uh, things you put on the bookshelf when you don't have the uh, the outer blockers. You know, uh, 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 when I first saw one of those, I I thought. Who has so many bookshelves and not enough books to need uh, those artificial blockers? I mean, uh, my my problem is always the opposite one. I I have too many books. I don't need anything extra. But some people apparently have bookshelves that don't have uh, uh, outside structure, <laughs> okay. which is an interesting idea. Why would you do that? Don't. I, I, I had such uh, uh, similar, not bookshelves, but they were, uh, you know, like storage shelves, uh, some, some metal storage shelves or something that didn't have uh, any any uh, good uh, side, uh, side bars or something like that uh, uh, in their structure. So I had to 3D print uh, additional elements, you know, to uh, for, for books not to fall or fall from the, from the, uh, from the shelves. Well, you can see this uh, shelves, by the way, behind me. And uh, currently, there are some large books standing there, and I'm not afraid that they will fall down because they are fixed uh, uh, neatly uh, and uh, you know uh, very tightly. There. <laughs> not not very tightly, but quite tightly. But uh, returning to these boxes, uh, uh, this structure has some similarities with the second uh, uh, box we saw, and. Um, uh, well, the, the basic principle, telescopic principle is... Uh, yeah, so uh, this one similar. is made out of uh, paper, cloth, cupboard, double-sided adhesive foil, mo and most importantly, sheet steel and magnets. So you can put fingers together to spread it, or you can just push from outside to contract it. I uh, Here I, I like how the locking mechanism looks uh, in, in this box uh, when it's, uh, you know, closed and open. Uh, uh, this, you know, so, 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 small yeah, point. Yes. so very simple and elegant. I like it. Uh, and, and it holds its shape because of the magnets, if I understand, uh, understand it correctly. Yeah. Probably we'll see it. I, I like it how you can't see how it holds its shape. <laughs> it should fall apart. Magic. Yeah, we've been discussing uh, using magnets in, in book binding with some, some binders. I guess we need to invite some, some guests uh, to our future podcast to talk, to discuss this subject a bit more, because uh, this is something that can definitely often stays hidden. And uh, um, I just had a discussion with, uh, uh, with uh, Piotr Jaros, who is also uh, famous for, uh, for using, uh, for making different, you know, uh, Boxes of different shapes uh, and uh, different box structures, and he he showed me a, a box that he made uh, some time ago with magnets, uh, and uh, it was a new concept. And uh, he he uh, told me a sad story of this box uh, that he showed it to some of his friends, and uh, almost uh, uh, no no one of of uh, of the people who to whom uh, he showed this box uh, realized how it should be used. And uh, the the idea and the uh, you know the uh, the technology is pretty smart, so it's it's a bit upsetting that <laughs> a smart idea <laughs> wasn't really understood. But yeah, maybe in the future. Uh, six box, um, two piece slipcase, Pavel. Oh yeah, uh, a two piece slipcase connected with two rubber bands ma made of cupboard and cupboard with and covered with elephant skin paper. 
Due to the rubber bands, the slipcase expands, the more books are in. When you take a book out, it will shrink again. Now, this is interesting. It will shrink on itself without you pressing from outside. So, rubber bands and automatic shrinking and another structure altogether to all the previous ones. Yep. Yep. Well, the, the basic principle, once again, it's, it's a telescopic, uh, telescopic element, but uh, there, is, there is an addition of something. Uh, so some new technology, rubber bands, uh, and uh, <laughs> this is... Uh, 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 just made me think uh, how durable it will be. Uh, that's, rubber that's... bands tend to expand from use. Well, I guess you you wouldn't uh, uh, open and close it uh, too often, and uh, it it stays on on the shelf and uh, uh, remains in in the same condition. Uh, but uh, yeah, rubber bands definitely tend to wear out and to you know to age. Uh, and uh, the other the other question is uh, the uh, the friction uh, on in the, on the top part where where the rubber bands are holding the the structure. Uh, would the friction uh, do something to the surfaces and to the you know to the uh, perpendicular elements of the box? So uh, yeah, that's an interesting yeah, question. Right. You, you you do tend to use things like that less frequently than you use your underwear. So decided to mention this this you know element of <laughs> our livelihood. <laughs> So this uh, this one is fun, uh, and, uh, again, completely different one. The three walls of my expanding slipcase are made of a single sheet of paper folded into a very dense accordion fold. I think you, you, you can just show it, it and it speaks for itself. Yeah. We saw it from different sides, so I will skip to the demonstration of how it's you know opens yes, up and closes it, it can it contracts by itself yeah, yeah. but yeah. without any rubber bands just using uh, 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 the, uh, the paper the springiness of paper itself yeah another interesting. another interesting concept yeah 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 uh, again Probably not the most durable ones. Accordion books don't tend to. But then, but yeah. then, uh, uh, considering the the use of this box, if if it's used, for example, for uh, uh, for the tutorials made by uh, binding up the out of the box projects, uh, well, uh, how 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 many times per year you will open this box and uh, uh, take the take the uh, books out and then uh, return them and uh, fully fully expand and uh, uh, this this box. So I guess the the wear wouldn't be too too much. Uh, now one uh, the one I like most in terms of aesthetics. It's a soft hinge case into adjustable parts made of cardboard, metal plate, extra fine adhesive, magnetic adhesive sheet. Magnets, glue paper, Japanese paper, uh, craft and leather. So lots and lots of materials. And again, both adhesives and magnets. And, and, and here, here is here is a really different approach to 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 the box structure, to the slipcase structure, because uh, 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 in this in this case we don't have uh, any any telescopic elements and. Uh, uh, it just you know, allows you to uh, to enlarge the inner inner volume just because the flaps are uh, made this way. So explain it to me again. How do you adjust the volume? You just uh, attach the flap a bit further out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the, the side flaps have uh, these multiple ridges over them, so uh, it allows you to have this, uh, uh, you know, uh, soft uh, uh, side that can uh, uh, can be can be folded in different places, and the, the back back flap uh, uh, is shifted and uh, uh, held by by a magnet magnet plate. And here is nine. 
So here's another one. The construction <coughs> consists of a middle part and two extendable compartments. The side walls of the cassette are hidden inside. And then they talk about how they replaced an initial idea of rods with a block, which you need to see to understand. <laughs> yeah, not... I still don't understand, but I like it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. And you can and you can hide them inside. Yeah. So again, like an uh, like an accordion, uh, by which I mean uh, the musical instrument. Uh, we'll finish with the tense uh, tense uh, slipcase, and then uh, I will read some comments because uh, there was something something interesting there in the comments uh, on Facebook. And uh, yeah, the tense entrance. Also, some rubber bands. Uh, white thick cardboard, elastic band, double sided adhesive tape. And in uh, the whole structure, seems to be quite quite lightweight. Now here, I, here it's even less. Oh, oh, I see. So it's rubber bands uh, and some kind of uh, accordion structure made of paper or not. What is it on? Or is it just a very wide rubber band on top? It's no, I think it was only a rubber band on top. Okay, so so if you had to choose, who would you vote for? Well, I that's that's not fair. <laughs> I, I haven't voted yet because I wanted to wait until the moment we we uh, uh, stream today and I will definitely vote probably later today or tomorrow. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, all of us have time until the 30th of October uh, to vote for any of these boxes. There is uh, an application form under, the, uh, under all these uh, uh, photos and videos and uh, you can find the link in the comments. Uh, I will post it uh, a moment ago. And, uh, uh, but I, 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 I won't say for, 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 for which of the boxes I want. <laughs> because I, I don't want to, you know, to skew the voting in any way. So, uh, by the way, have you uh, recognized uh, any of the anonymous com uh, competitors? Uh, I, I'm not sure. I have I have a couple of guesses, but uh, not, not, not more than that. Not, oh. not, not even the 3D printed one. Uh, that's by the way, I don't know who, uh, maybe, maybe I have one guess, but, uh, uh, it, it really depends on geography <laughs> because, uh, well, we'll see. So, uh, a couple of comments, uh, from, uh, from Facebook, as I promised, uh, uh, Ayn Khan, uh, the, the, the person to, with, with whom I, I was in, in touch recently, uh, uh, because of the, uh, um, dark archives, uh, uh bindings and, uh, uh, many thanks to him for for providing uh, photos and uh, other materials uh, that we will show a bit later uh, during our live stream today. So here is a question concern: Are slip case arguably damaging for the books, uh, both in terms of friction wear, but also in that it creates a vacuum upon uh, removal, which can cause issues as well. This letter is why the Library of Congress uh, uh, stopped using slip cases at all. I think everything in the uh, Rosenwald, Rosenwald collection that was in slipcase has been shifted to archival boxes. Uh, Pavel, uh, somehow there is more sound from you coming and uh, uh, shifted to archival boxes, uh, which also preserve the original slipcase. Uh, so <laughs> expandable archival boxes. Yeah, that's that's definitely an issue. And uh, let me. Uh, Pavel, uh, please uh, uh, pick up talking for a moment, and I will switch the uh, uh, the view for our uh, for everybody, uh, and uh, I will stop sharing the. Um, and Pavel didn't pick up the talking. Uh, I, got, I, got, I got lost yes. in the. I, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know how you do it because uh, when, apart from you, I also have. 
uh, uh, my browser with lots of tabs and two streams on uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook. Um, that's a bit too much we, for me. We, we, we need a live stream producer. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, definitely. There, there are many issues with uh, uh, sleep case boxes, uh, uh, but I guess uh, everything depends on the on the use and uh, on the uh, uh, on the current conditions uh, and. Uh, if you are planning to use this expandable slipcase uh, box for uh, for these tutorials, well, why not? It's not something that's uh, that's too old or too fragile or too uh, easy to damage. Uh, probably in in a hundred years, if somebody would would want to, you know, to keep these uh, tutorials and uh, uh, to have them uh, not damaged in any way, they would probably. Uh, take them and uh, and put in a clamshell box or um, something like that. Uh, but uh, uh, for for the current use, it's a fun and interesting uh, idea and approach, and uh, it can be quite useful. Uh, we could we could we could do with expandable uh, bookshelves as well uh, <laughs> for for this expand expandable. Oh yeah, and expandable apartments too. <laughs> Uh, well, there are there are you know uh, this uh, how how do you how 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 are they called are are recreational vehicle uh, vehicles uh, uh, which have have expandable uh, walls and uh, so when when you uh, drive to when you come over to to the to some location you can expand the inside volume of your uh, of your RV and uh, you have more space and you have uh, separate rooms and I know that uh, TV. Uh, production and the movie production uses uh, uh, similar ones as well, but, well, you still need some space around here <laughs> to, to have this ability to expand. Um, I, was also, I was also wondering uh, if it was possible to make a box that doesn't just expand in one direction, because I, uh, I imagine a box collecting materials of uh, uh, varying sizes and uh, uh, Say if some, uh, if a new brochure is bigger than the previous one, so that you could move the other two sets of walls too. Uh, we have an issue. No, we don't have an issue. I don't think. Uh, please, uh, somebody watching us on on Facebook, could you please tell us if uh, if we still are streaming or not? Because uh, uh, we have a comment a minute ago that uh, a live video was ended. And uh, the the system shows me that we're continuing to stream and uh, everything should be fine. And uh, well, I I switched on the video right now and uh, we're live there there as well. So um, yeah, I'm not sure what what was that, but uh, it seems that everything is working. So um, if if you if you are there and uh, okay, yeah. Sorry, yeah, apparently exactly. needed to refresh the screen. Yeah, I, I also have the, had this issue. Uh, my Facebook window just crashed uh, uh, several minutes ago, so I thought maybe when I reloaded everything, I, <laughs> I crashed the stream as well. But uh, no. So I hope, at least in part, I, I uh, answered Ian's question, and uh, that's that's a great question. Thanks a lot. And uh, the second, the other comment from him: uh, magnetic bindings. See Michael uh, Michael Cox. Cox. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, sorry. And an alliterative uh, abecedarium of anthropomorphic animals designed to fall apart so it can be seen as, a, as, as an accordion. So, uh, and there was there is a link there. Uh, I yeah, which, 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 I re to. which I recommend everyone following. It's a fun one. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, that's it with the first part of our stream. I hope you you liked it, and uh, uh, let's Don't move on. Don't forget to vote. Don't forget to vote. Don't forget to vote. Yeah, you use the link and don't forget to vote. And uh, uh, that that's that that's something something new and something different compared to many other uh, book banning competitions. And I I really hope. Uh, uh, ben and his colleagues uh, will decide to, you know, to uh, launch another competition next year or in a couple of years because this is uh, uh, something that can, uh, you know, uh, make all of us binders better and more creative. <laughs> so uh, what's next? We wanted to show you uh, a part of the uh, recording of uh, one of the recent podcasts, but uh, uh, I didn't have time to do that. Sorry about that. Uh, probably next time. 
and I guess we are switching to our uh, human skin topic. Pavel, are you ready? Uh, yeah. I guess we'll start yeah. with, with your part of the uh, story. Yeah, so, uh, so let me share my screen. So. Uh, 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 today we'll be talking about an exhibition that was inspired by this great book, Dark Archive, Dark Archives, a librarian's investigation into the science and history I also, of I also brought, it, brought it to live stream. <laughs> mm, um, I, looks, looks great, uh, a great thing to have. I, I would really like to, to, to have it signed by, by Megan Rosenblum uh, in the future, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Uh, it, it was, uh, I think, um, uh, some of our guests uh, told us that uh, uh, she, she, she had a tradition of uh, uh, having uh, books uh, signed by signed guests in of, blood. On, of, of, of podcasts or something like that. But uh, that, that's, that's a fine idea to, to have uh, uh, all the guests of our podcast sign some, some books for us. <laughs> so, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. So it was written by um, uh, uh, Megan Rosenblum. Uh, she's a librarian at a medical library in US, uh, uh, in California, I think Norris Medical Library. She's been uh, researching this topic for a while, so I've heard about her from uh, from her articles that she wrote before she wrote uh, the book. Uh, the book and the topic in itself which is a wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, and impossible to remember name, Anthropodermic Bibliopagy. So it's the making of, book bi uh, of bindings out of human skin. I highly recommend everyone to lose themselves uh, this month, preferably, in, in this uh, wonderful page. I do it almost every year, and almost every year I find something, something new. Something new? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, you know how in October suddenly news about things like that appear all over the net. I I uh, I uh, wrote that now at UCLA. I guess uh, that's that's uh, about Megan. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, we we had uh, we had uh, uh, feedback on on YouTube as well that uh, Pavel is very hard to hear. But uh, I I tried to boost. Uh, Pavel's uh, sound just a bit. We'll see how it goes. Uh, uh, hope that, it will that, be better. That's strange. I'm like 15 centimeters from, uh, yeah, from my, yeah. my mic. I, but I, I hear Pavel pretty well, but uh, uh, well, uh, it may be different on the other side. Uh, please tell us if it became better. Uh, okay, so, so uh, first uh, first point uh, to start, if you want to know much, much more than we can tell, is this uh, page. Then there is a category of images on uh, uh, Wikipedia's sister site, where there are quite a few examples, uh, which is also a great place, because you can f follow the links, like, say, this notebook allegedly covered in human sk in skin, which is... Uh, uh, kept in the uh, welcome library, and you can follow the links and read all about it. By the way, we need to uh, to say that it's extremely difficult to say for sure that uh, a book is made out of human skin. Uh, uh, apart from the cases where we have a, a good tradition or documentary evidence, uh, the actual tests are all often inconclusive. Mm -hmm. So you can't just look at it under microscope because human skin is not that different to the skin of our, uh, other animals, especially after treated by harsh chemicals. You can try and uh, do a DNA analysis, but that will probably also not work because of those very uh, chemicals, because DNA gets destroyed. There are some peptide tests that have been uh, 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 done to some of the books, so they are the most reliable uh, tests uh, there are, but again, they are not conclusive and only when all, all the lines of evidence combined can we be more or less sure that that is what it is. So, uh, the books themselves uh, have been made for hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, uh, some medieval sources mention uh, books made of human skin, but they are often legendary and those books are not known to us. The examples we do have mostly come from the 18th and 19th century and 
fall into several categories, which are all, I think, very telling. Because why would you buy the book in human skin? Well, there are a few examples. One category, and this image. Uh, I, 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 I don't think. Uh, uh... Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, now, uh, now, guests can see because yeah. uh, because our faces are <laughs> covering this image. So, yeah. I see. So this image is probably one of the most uh, visited examples of anthropom uh, anthropodomic bibliophagy. Okay, I won't be saying that again. So this is probably the most visited example because it is uh, a notebook. Uh, bound in the skin of this gentleman whose death mask we see on the top. Uh, here is another uh, object made of his skin, a piece of his uh, back, I think. And he is a very well known fella. He is uh, one of the pair known as Buck and Hare murderers. Uh, those were two fellas in Edinburgh during the Scottish uh, Enlightenment who were procure, procuring uh, corpses for uh, medical institutions because every student was uh, supposed to try his hand and uh, working on a real body on the one hand. And on the other hand, there were very few legal ways to acquire it. In fact, there was just one in Edinburgh it, and it was the bodies of uh, uh, convicted criminals who were executed in the city and there were like one or two of them a year so all the medical institutions bought their bodies from body snatchers from uh, grave diggers who dug up very fresh bodies and sold them for good money and doctors obviously never asked questions so these two guys uh, uh, encountered to, to, to bring more positivity to this dark yeah, topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so these two guys, uh, they were having a, a booming business when a craze began protecting bodies from body snatchers. Because imagine that relatives weren't too happy when they came nine days after the burial and found no burial to, uh, to attend. So they decided just killing people and selling their bodies uh, to, uh, to the doctors. When they were eventually caught, it was the biggest story of the decade. Their names are still well known. Uh, places where they lived are still, uh, uh, are still uh, visited by tourists. And in one uh, of the museums, you can find this wonderful object. And uh, they... It's not the only uh, uh, example of criminals. Are you posting those links, by the way? No, uh, no I'm not. <laughs> Sorry, I was <laughs> too <not. laughs> overwhelmed by, by the story. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe we can post, uh, post them as one block later. OK, here is another example from the same category, often dubbed the best known, the world's best known book bound in human skin. This is of a rather famous or infamous uh, highway robber man, James Allen, early, uh, early 19th century Massachusetts. Uh, uh, he, is, uh, he is well known because just before he died, he made a confession and it was written down and bound uh, uh, in, uh, in his own skin because he asked the doctor to do it. And uh, this book is still kept in uh, the Boston Athenaeum, uh, a, a, a great museum, and is still on display. You can read about it on their website, or you can go and make uh, a pilgrimage to it, I guess, if you <laughs> that thing. So that is one category. There are more examples, but these are um, best known. Another category uh, is uh, versions of dance macabre uh, 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 which is a dance of death uh, late medieval early renaissance uh, uh, a book describing how de death comes for everyone uh, i can't show you examples of the bindings because all the photos i, fo I found are just awful but, but i can find, uh, uh, show you some drawings some uh, woodcuts uh, uh, here's one by uh, hans holbein and this is uh, uh, 
uh, from the very first edition of this book, a very young Holbein, before he came to England, before he ever left his uh, hometown, he was making things like that. Uh, at, I think something like 18 years old, maybe 20. I, so I, I have almost picked up uh, with, with the links, so there are some links in, in the chat right now. <laughs> okay, so here's one example from that book. I really like this woodcut. Uh, uh, here's an, uh, another. Uh, the previous one was uh, showing an abbot. Here's the death coming from a, a peasant. Uh, here's, a, uh, here's an example from uh, an earlier book from the famous Nuremberg uh, Chronicles. Uh, another example of uh, 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 Dance Macabre. Uh, by the way, Dura might have had a hand uh, in making this. Again, it's something like 16 years old. Ah, uh, kids those days. So, uh, the, uh, the, th uh, the third example, uh, the third category are bound copies of Vesalius. Well, if you look at the one of the most famous illustrations from the books, from the book, you can see why a doctor would think of binding it into skin. Uh, uh, and of this, I can show you uh, uh, a, a good example. There are three examples of uh, Vesalius's uh, uh, a book bound in human skin in uh, oh God, oh God, in uh, UCLA library. No, no in Philadelphia, yeah, in, in the College of uh, uh, Physicians uh, 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 in Philadelphia. These three come from the, the, from the same collection, but were evidently bound in, by different masters at different times. So it was clearly a trend uh, in the 19th century. Uh, and uh, to an even more gruesome example, uh, 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 these three books uh, were, uh, were bound on the order of a doctor, uh, just to remember a particularly unusual uh, case. We know she was called Mary and she never gave her, uh, her consent to this. He just decided that she wants to remember her. And they are now again in the College of Physicians, I think. Yeah, again, in Philadelphia. So Philadelphia has the biggest collection of books bound in human skin, something like seven or eight books in total. Uh, and you can read about that. And uh, to finish uh, 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 the story off, my favorite example of all times, this snappy gentleman, this uh, uh, man who uh, who is Camille Flammarion, uh, who is perhaps only known nowadays to uh, uh, people interested in the history of astronomy and to people interested in human bound books. Because when one of his female fans, and yes, astronomers had female fans in those days. So when she died, she bequeathed her skin to him so that he could, uh, 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 so that he could bound an exam uh, a copy of his best known book into her skin and apparently he didn't say what the f he went and did that we don't have the book but we have an image of, of him holding that book and it was his prized possession and he uh, uh, and when he died it uh, was next to him on a bed table which i think is special shall we say so those are the most famous books uh, uh, bound in human skin. Uh, there are many, many more. And now we can talk by the about the books that were inspired by this. Um, he, here, is a, here is another uh, message from uh, Ayn Rui Khan. Uh, uh, one first uh, test is uh, if the binding is not tooled completely smooth, uh, looking at the hair follicle uh, pattern, thick skin most similar to, to human shows uh, follicle in small triangles, little sets of uh, three. Human is random. Um, and uh, then Ayn, Ayn Rai writes, uh, I've exposed a handful of, uh, a handful of purportedly skin-bound books uh, in this manner. Uh, not well, not not dispositive in the in the in the positive, but uh, can disprove a purported binding. So, 
uh, it 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 uh, doesn't doesn't really give you a positive result if it, if it isn't, but uh, it can uh, uh, show that some binding isn't bound in uh, in human skin. So uh, at least something. And Pavel, uh, yeah. Yes. Well, Pavel, Pavel, Pavel yes, unexpectedly so, stopped, so, so. stopped sharing the screen and uh, and uh, cut cut me in half in the process because he didn't warn that I need to switch the the, the windows. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's uh, it's Halloween, so that's okay, I guess. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, so. We basically can't ever be sure it's human skin unless uh, it has a documentary trail. But uh, if it's goat or cow or sheep, we can tell it from the follicles. And pig skin is so similar to human skin that we just can't tell. That's curious, but also not that surprising because uh, pig skin grafts are sometimes used to replace uh, human skin in uh, in operations, so they are very similar. So, uh, and now we are moving to this uh, virtual virtual exhibition, and uh, uh, the bindings are for for this uh, uh, book by Megan uh, Megan Rosenblum, and uh, um, there are six bindings there. Uh, Five of them are made by by American uh, bookbinders and uh, one by British bookbinder, and uh, uh, we'll we'll see some photos now. And I guess Pavel will help us with uh, uh, at least parts of descriptions uh, uh, because uh, um, I've also posted links to uh, to uh, the exhibition and to the virtual exhibition, so you can follow us along there. Thank you, thank you for that. So we, we will go in, in the in the order uh, the books were listed in, in catalog, and uh, I guess that's that's alphabetical order uh, uh, following the surnames of the bookbinders. So uh, the first one is uh, Gabby Cooksey, and I, I'm not sure if we will pronounce all the surnames correctly. I'm I'm sorry in advance if we uh, mess up uh, uh, something, but I hope we will be. Um, Correct. Pavel, are you ready to talk yes, to us? So I'll be pretending to be to be Gabby Cooksey. The design binding of Dark Archives started with the question: What if? What if I could tattoo a book? Can you even tattoo a book? How can I be respectful of uh, respectful of the contents of the book while learning a completely different trade? With those questions and um, uh, with imagery from the book and a new tattoo gun, I pursued a tattoo salon in my boundary. Blowing up the title, mirroring it, uh, made it feel like a Chester or forearm tattoo, while making the corner tattoos felt ornamental to traditional book design. Merging the two fields was a joy to learn and conveying what I wanted with Dark Archives. And it is quite something. Mm. A, few, a few years uh, back, uh, uh, there was a great traveling uh, exhibition uh, dedicated to tattoos. It went all over the world, all, all over Europe, and visited Moscow too. And uh, what they did is they ordered uh, uh, big stretches of artificial skin uh, or even uh, an artificial uh, arm covered in artificial skin or a chest and they are uh, and they asked uh, russian artists to make tattoos on them and it was very very unsettling i have to say even knowing that it's artificial when a hand stands uh, behind gl uh, behind glass in front of you it's it's an interesting experience imagine living through that book uh, yeah yeah and uh... The, the 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 other the other five books are are also quite striking, but uh, this definitely uh, um, made me you know uh, stop and uh, contemplate and uh, think about things. And uh, I I never really thought that uh, um, uh, dead leather can be can be tattooed, and uh, uh, I never thought that a leather bound book can be tattooed. And uh, 
uh, I, I I don't know if, we, if if it was done before. It would be interesting to to you know to know more about it. Uh, but uh, that's definitely a creative approach to to the topic and to uh, design by name. So many thanks to Gabby Cooksey for for this idea and for this uh, design. Yeah. And uh, we have we have another comment with, from from Ian. I, I understood that uh, uh, the name uh, can be pronounced Ian or can be, or uh, either can can be pronounced Ian, and I'm not sure which one of uh, these pronunciations uh, is is right in this case. So. Uh, um, I'm sorry once again if if I'm, <laughs> I'm pronouncing the name uh, wrong, but uh, here here it is uh, worth noting that Gabby uh, bought a tattooing gun and uh, taught herself to ink skin in order to create this binding. She uh, loved in, in quotes doing it and uh, has promised me that she plans another that will be entirely um, inks, no negative space. Something to wait for. Uh, so the next one, say, Sam, Sam, uh, Ian. Okay, sorry, mm. Ian. I I'll try to you know to pronounce it correctly from now on. Um, another one is uh, Sam, uh, Sam Feinstein or Feinstein. Uh, well, also maybe. Uh, so this is a full leather binding. Uh, each folio got it with uh, Kizukishi Japanese tissue and section of Stonehenge mold made paper with decorative paper marbled by the binder. <coughs> Head decorated with graphite and toned gold leaf, double core and bands sewn I'll, with I'll, I'll have silk to... thread. Yeah, here is here is to show the the uh, the heads uh, the top page of the book. Yeah, yeah. Uh, co uh, covered in alum pig pigskin, tooled in blind and uh, 23 karat gold, gold skin leather onlays, binder signature in blind on the red onlay on the rear turn in. So, uh, I like this part of the description, which is very long. Uh, at the time of this binding, with the results uh, last published May 2019, the anthropodermic book project has conclusively identified 18 bindings bound in human skin. To represent this, 18 of the human skin tool impressions were gilt, with the rest in blind to leave to the imagination the potentials out there that have yet to be discovered. Yet to be discovered, definitely. So, uh, uh, and hopefully not yet to be made, discovered. I like the word discovered. Uh, yeah, this this may be this may be very dark, but I'm sure that there will be made. Yeah, there will be more uh, human skin bindings made uh, throughout uh, the the future history of humanity. If well, if if, if humanity survives, you know, um, climate change and uh, uh, weapons of mass destruction. We'll see how it goes. Well, aren't you a ray of sunshine today? <laughs> Sorry. <As ever>. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, Aaron Fletcher is somebody uh, whom we already mentioned on our podcast and uh, uh, on our live stream uh, last time, two weeks ago. As far as I remember, Aaron had uh, um, a binding uh, in the uh, exhibition uh, in, in, in London that I visited and uh, that we talked about uh, the um yeah and uh, uh it's it's uh, in the uh, other other guests of our podcast also mentioned Aaron because of uh, uh stitched bindings so here is here it is so this so this particular uh, binding is dedicated to Mary Lynch who, uh, uh, whose skin was used by a doctor without her consent and uh, stored for uh, decades before finally being used to buy the book on gynecology. Uh, 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 materials are French style fine binding with laced in boards, bound in partial sanded blackberry goat skin with back pad onlays in various handmade papers. So those are papers, I was wondering. Uh, 
Uh, onlays and leather are embellished with embroidery, colored pencil and gouache. Uh, leather wrapped and bands in raspberry goldskin with, with bands of ochre yellow, violet and straw threads. Edge to edge, uh, the blues in orchid handmade paper sprinkled with bright blue gouache, matching uh, leather hinge, hinges, pink lilac handmade paper fly leaves, clamshell box with blackberry goat skin and mustard yellow, Katie McGregor handmade paper, leather spine in embroidered uh, is embroidered in cotton floss, trays covered in Nile duo cloth and lined with ruby. Nova Swede. Uh, I would really like to talk to Erin Fletcher because every time we encounter her work, it's it's amazing. Uh, uh, yeah, I I, I, I talked to Erin uh, some time ago on, on Instagram, and I'm sure I'm sure we will return uh, uh, to uh, to discuss uh, inviting her to one of our future uh, podcasts. We just need to, you know, to work through our current current schedule and, uh, um, you know, work with the uh, records with all the guests we'll, we have already invited. And uh, then I guess we will move forward to inviting new ones because we're a bit over, overwhelmed at the moment. <laughs> I really, uh, about, with her works, I really like, uh, it's rare when so many materials are used and it, uh, it, uh, doesn't scream many materials. It looks very wholesome. I mean, it's not used uh, just to use many materials. It's very organic. Mm -hmm. So another another uh, another message from uh, from Ian. Uh, uh, I know of two modern uh, modern in quotes. So I guess modern modern era or or current uh, uh contemporary uh modern skin uh, books made with the skin of a woman who had uh, lap band surgery and lost a tremendous amount of weight uh, had skin removed and had a small book of poetry and a diary bound in her own skin that's well that's that's an interesting concept but well, did, did you did you hear anything about this case no i need to read up on it that's interesting uh Next one, Dominic Riley. So, a full leather binding uh, using linen thread with cushioned boards, brown gold skin with light brown gold skin joints and the blues, uh, light brown pig skin fly leaves, edges decorated with acrylic, silk sewn hand headbands, tooled in silver and glow in the dark foil on cover and the blues. Glow in the dark. Can we see that? I want to see glow in the dark. I Do think have... that there was an image there somewhere. Uh, did I? Did I? Yeah, here it is. Oh, I see. Okay, and about those figures, uh, Dominic writes, uh, uh, "This is a puzzle book. That is both Megan's work and mine." The human figures on the covers are the well-known image of the chalk outline of the CSI dead body. They are cut up in the manner of animal butchery. The cryptic lines at top conceal the title. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, it does say Duck Archives. Yeah. Another <laughs> okay. Mm. So that's an interesting one. Yeah, yeah, you can you can see it even even here, but uh, well, obviously in in the black light or in yeah, in, in the darkness, yeah. it's it's uh, <laughs> it's much better. I I didn't catch it before uh, before you showed me the uh, the glowing image. Yeah, and here here is the edge. Uh, so next one, Rebecca Rebecca Staley. Rebecca Staley. Laced on boards uh, constructed of bone and brass, exposed, spine and fly leaves in black goat skin, silk covered clamshell box lined with soundproofing wool felt. Uh, and soundproofing because it will probably scream from inside and you don't want to be scared by that. I like all, that. All you don't want to scare it uh, by, by the sounds from outside, you know. <laughs> 
why not you why not use chains too as you did on the monstrous book of monsters in harry potter <laughs> <laughs> and on many many books throughout the history of <laughs> humanity although not for that reason yeah not, not for that reason <laughs> definitely so here are some more photos of the books and the last uh, the last entrant uh, called colin urbina uh, Colin Urbina, three part braidal binding, wrinkled <laughs> calfskin, yeah, the, I remember those wrinkles, foil stamping, rounded spine box, goat skin, blind tooling with calfskin foil, stamped label. And where is the label? Uh, I guess this one, on, yeah. On the box? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this dark roiling uh, binding is very challenging to photograph well, uh, thus the iterative repetition, attempting to capture its subtle disturbances. And do we have the fly leaves? Because the fly leaves are impressive too. Yeah, here, here. here yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Uh, I, wa I wonder why the moon, or is it supposed to be a uh, human skin under, uh, under microscope? Or both. It also it also reminds me of uh, experiments uh, with uh, with paper making where when uh, uh, droplets of water are uh, uh, sent to the surface of a newly made sheet of paper and this creates also this moon like pattern and uh, I'm not sure which which it is uh, uh, in in this in this case in this binding. Uh... He gives an interesting qu quote from uh, uh, from the uh, from the book. Uh, it says, uh, "Unlike the Necronomicon on the spell book in Disney's 1993 film Hocus Pocus, real human skin books do not announce themselves with a ghoulish appearance. They do not look much different from any other antiquarian book you would find on the shelf." Now these books certainly do look very different <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so let us switch back and uh, uh, that's the the virtual exhibition uh, uh, by Lux Lux Mantis or Lux Mantis uh, I guess it should in be English it's Lux? usually Lux Lux exactly. Mantis but yeah yeah, yeah but in Latin it was <laughs> um, Lux and uh, uh, Pavel, Pavel posted the link, and uh, as, as far as uh, Ian uh, uh, wrote me, uh, uh, some of the books uh, are, are, are already sold. Uh, other books are available if you're interested, and uh, uh, you can find more information uh, there on the website and uh, browse through some, some of the photos. And uh, that's, that's yeah, an interesting and, 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 interesting and, the... and timely po project. Yeah, and those end papers were human skin under magnification, according to Ian, and they did look for all the uh, for all the world like uh, the moon or uh, or the ancient surface of uh, Mercury. Uh, Im imagine imagine that a whole world. <laughs> Ian is a great uh, guest. Uh, uh... Off camera guest on our podcast, probably we had to bring him in online. Uh, but he, he uh, wrote that uh, uh, most of these binders uh, uh, attended uh, North Bennett Street School uh, binding program, which which is uh, an amazing program uh, that we mentioned on our podcast. Uh, and, uh, we we talked to some people who attended uh, the, this uh, program, so. Uh, uh, when I when I when I uh, was looking for for a program for myself, uh, uh, it sort of was one of the programs I was considering. But then it's it's uh, they have this uh, long two year, as far as I remember, course, uh, which is a bit too much uh, for me to leave uh, to leave home for two years, and and it was a bit too expensive for me as well. So I chose to uh, attend uh, uh, separate courses at uh, the American Academy of Bookbinding in. Uh, in uh, Telluride, Colorado, but still, uh, uh, yeah, that's 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 a great program. Um, so, yeah, another one. Uh, 
this project benefits a uh, BIPOC focused scholarship that's uh, at Guild of Book Workers. So once again, please uh, follow the link and uh, uh, enjoy the view of the bindings. Uh, we'll probably invite some of the book binders behind these bindings uh, to our podcast in the future. So stay tuned, subscribe, you know, all that. Uh, and uh, we still have some time and we still have uh, have some things to discuss and uh, uh, we wanted to continue our um, section of uh, uh, books and book bindings in uh, in the in the popular art uh, today and to talk talk about uh, books bookish objects and uh, uh, you know linguistics related uh, things uh, of of the new dune movie and well, I guess also the book by uh, Frank Herbert as, as well. And uh, I'll have to show you some photos. And uh, Pavel will talk for a moment if he can. And uh, I will work with the photos. So, uh, as Stepan did previously with uh, the first season of Game of Thrones, he selected uh, uh, so, uh some uh, bookish objects or knowing him probably all bookish objects <laughs> from, uh, uh, from the film uh i'm i'm yet to see it so i hope you won't spoil it for me well you've read the book so uh and i saw the first movie and they're basically the same no they're not <laughs> like, like <us. laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, I, I have the photos, and now I need to switch to show all of you and file the photos. So please give me a moment. I'm, um, I'm, I'm seeing the first one, yeah. Yeah, just, just, yeah, and here we are. Uh, I also wanted to say something about the, the previous. Uh, oh, yeah, no, not about the previous stuff. Uh, uh, if you joined uh, uh, our live stream in the very beginning, uh, did you see our new uh, uh, how do you, how do you call it uh, uh, the, the initial picture we have? Pavel, how how I forgot the word. Preview, uh, preview picture. The, no, the preview no. picture. No, <laughs> stop picture. Well, anyway, this this uh, beautiful uh, room uh, that was drawn drawn. Uh, uh, for us and uh, last time we used it without the table so we're moving in slowly you know we brought the books first and the, some bookshelves and uh, now there is a table with some stuff and even a picture on the wall um, so uh, and, and the picture ha has a nice easter egg inside it yeah 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 you should scroll through our instagram account to find <laughs> to find the reference in this easter egg, I guess. So uh, I uh, made some uh, screenshots uh, from from the movie, and uh, uh, there are there are definitely some uh, some bookish uh, objects there in the movie. Um, it's it's not probably not as fun as with the uh, Game of Thrones, uh, our our uh, series of posts and uh, a video about uh, object bookish objects of Game of Thrones because there were many more. Uh, old bindings there in in uh, in the game of thrones but still there are some things worth mentioning and some uh, things to find out uh, uh we just want to share uh with you so if you know the story uh, uh you, you know that uh, uh printed or written books and objects have some importance in the world of uh, dune uh if you don't know the story i wouldn't spoil it much if i say that uh, uh, artificial intelligence and uh, 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 powerful computers are prohibited in the world of Dune due to some uh, historical reasons. And uh, so they have to use some primitive technology and well, books. And uh, we we see uh, uh, books used by the uh, one of the main characters, by Paul Atreus, uh, uh, throughout the uh, movie. There are books in his room. There are books uh, used by other characters, and uh, here is one of the uh, first scene in the movie. It's like uh, six minutes into the movie, he he's already reading a book uh, about uh, about Arrakis, about uh, the planet Dune, uh, where uh, their family is moving to. And um, in this book, 
and the, that's the wrong mouse sorry and and do do they have uh, like some special alphabet is it printed in that yeah. alphabet yeah yeah here here you can see so uh, there are there are yeah and uh, as far as i understand it was developed specifically for the movie and uh, there are several languages at least several languages used in the in the movie and uh, there are a bit more la languages used in the book and there is uh, this is this is Gallic, uh, the galactic language that uh, sort of evolved uh, from a uh, mix of english and different slavic languages and when you read the book you can uh, hear this uh, uh, this heritage of uh, well, english is hard, it's hard to hear because uh, if you if you read the book in English, uh, it will be hard to find out these uh, uh, references to to the language's history. But in the English book, you often uh, see Russian and other Slavic words, uh, which uh, surprised me when I when I first read the book uh, as a kid. And I'm not sure how it was uh, translated into the but, uh, but, uh, but, Russian but, version but, of the book. But when was uh, when was uh, this written? Uh, uh, 19, 1965. Uh, I, I think so. So that so that's funny. Uh, so this is uh, the height of the Cold War. Yeah. And uh, c uh, and uh, and he is sure that in uh, the future will be determined by uh, the U.S. and the U.S.S.R. Well, or, or at least in English-speaking world and and yeah, uh, yeah and Russians. And um, compa uh, compare that to the Firefly. Remember that TV yeah, series? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was fil uh, filmed in early two thousands. And their language of the future and culture were based on uh, American culture and, and Chinese, Chinese culture yeah, and Chinese yeah, language. Yeah, yeah, so by yeah. the, by the ni late nineties, early two thousands, um, Russian and Slavic heritage weren't thought to be um, that determining for the future. Well, not not really. I, I uh, from time to time I, I see modern science science fiction where uh, Russian language has some prominence in the future. And uh, well, I guess. Uh, that's that's probably uh, probably will be the case because there there were some some uh, there there is some prognosis uh, about how fast uh, languages die out and uh, uh, then the, there are estimates they that by by the twenty second century there will be like a couple hundred languages remaining or or something like that so, or at least actively spoken languages and uh, Russian is still uh, one of the top. I'm not sure if top five, but definitely top ten languages. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I look some, at the, some, uh, some three hundred or four hundred million people talk Russian, and uh, well, that. Yeah, I, I, I looked at the statistics something. and uh, and the projections. There is something depending on how you count from like six to seven thousand languages nowadays, and at least one language goes extinct uh, extinct every week. Which is a frightening thought, uh, and basically uh, only a couple dozen languages have a chance to survive uh, uh, in uh, in a couple hundred years as major languages, and they are the languages of today. Everything that has less than a hundred thousand uh, speakers will basically be corrupted by surrounding bigger languages and mm -hmm. won't survive as a major. Uh, language basically it will be uh, 12 languages and then a few uh, hundred languages used on that home at least at least there is hope that uh, many of the languages will be documented uh, because currently uh, many scientists work on on this issue and uh, this method so returning to Gallag, uh, it is supposedly as i said based on uh, uh, slavic and english uh, slavic languages and english and uh, there are some other influences as well as well, in in the script, it's it's hard to tell. Uh, uh, I I saw some uh, people comment on the web that uh, there is some uh, uh, probably some Coptic influence or something like that, and uh, the, there probably you can find some Greek influence there. You can find some uh, Cyrillic influence. Uh, well, it, it look it looks Syriac to me. Yeah, personally. yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe that as well. So it's 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 a mixed pot of uh, 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 European and uh, uh, Asian uh, uh, linguistic uh, heritage. So an interesting thing, and uh, you can you can visit the, the website of, of the person who uh, developed uh, these languages for for the project, and uh, 
that's the uh, same person who who developed languages for the Game of, Game of Thrones project. And uh, well, we already mentioned Game of Thrones today, but uh, that's worth mentioning once again. Uh, um, David J. Peterson is the person behind. Yeah, there, uh, there are great interviews with him where he describes how he constructs the uh, uh, the languages. He uh, he uh, he always has a message in uh, the language's grammar. It it is supposed to tell you something about the uh, story of the people. So he, he's a very interesting guy. Yeah, yeah. And moreover, he developed uh, the sign language for this movie because uh, uh, some of the characters were. Uh, no, I I didn't I didn't make any screenshots for that because uh, you probably better need to make uh, video clips and uh, with video clips it's uh, well it's better not to uh, not to anger uh, youtube gods uh, with video clips for, for for from a blockbuster currently in the works <laughs> so uh, yeah and uh, i wanted to return to this photo and uh, it, it's a sample of uh, their primitive uh, uh, computer technology they have this pro these projectors we'll see projector working in in the in the, in the future still shots as well um and uh, next here's the here's this scene where um how how was he called uh, the i i lost my pages herald of change coming to uh, to Caladan the home seat of of uh, the house Atreides uh, and uh, I, I included this because there is another bookish object, not, not bookish, I guess bookish, because he is holding a scroll with this announcement that uh, um, Atreides' uh, family uh, has to uh, move to Dune, to Arrakis, uh, by the decree of uh, Emperor, shut down the end. Uh, and uh, uh, we do not see this uh, scroll in detail, unfortunately. I hope uh, uh, production uh, production team will uh, publish more photos and uh, information about this scroll because uh, uh, in in the elements you can see that it's uh, it's uh, made with some black material and with golden letters over it. So it's it's a rather beautiful object. Uh, and here you can see some garlic as well. Some some more letters and once again I guess you can find uh, some Greek and the Cyrillic uh, incidents here as well. As well uh, as Georgian Armenian something uh, something yeah. early. Yeah. yeah 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 and uh, that's that's another thing I wanted to uh, if 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 uh, some of our viewers already already watched the movie you'll understand what what I'm referring to if not so once again it's not a major spoiler it's not a spoiler at all. But after this, uh, um, this scroll uh, is signed and uh, uh, stamped, uh, the uh, the herald of, of the change uh, folds its back, scrolls it in, into the into the into the coffer, and I was just curious. Uh, it was uh, stamped with wax by two or three persons there. So wouldn't the wax seals be destroyed in the process of falling? <laughs> I guess it's it, it's maybe a, a bookish blooper <laughs> in this movie. Uh, that's that's some um, uh, tombs on on Caladan uh, with uh, uh, Gallic once again, or maybe not Gallic by the way. Here it may be, but yeah, the letters seem seem pretty similar. Uh, here here it may be uh, ancestral language of uh, uh, Atreides, which. As far as I remember, maybe has some French influence or not. I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I may be wrong on, on that part. Um, but yeah, they they use they use the language quite a lot, and uh, I'm I'm very happy about that. And uh, uh, what's what's even better, and uh, I know Star Wars fans uh, maybe maybe wouldn't be happy for for me mentioning that, but uh, uh, with the Arabic, uh, uh, the uh, scripts of uh, star wars uh, the, the the there is no language behind the uh, arabish there is english language behind arabish and so it's just english words uh, written with a different script uh, uh unlike in star wars here is uh, here is a real invented language behind all this all this text 
and that's uh, that's Paul's Paul's room on Caledon, and uh, there are books there. He's he's uh, you know a kid who likes to read, or at least has to read. We don't really know if he likes to read. And uh, that's that's the scene that the scene with the uh, with Bene Gesserit's uh, 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 mother uh, uh, and uh, with this Gom Jabbar. I, I wouldn't go into any details, uh, but uh, here it happens in the library. And unfortunately, the I had to enhance these images and to uh, bring more a lot more light uh, uh, into the scene because the the scene itself is is very dark. But uh, yeah, here here is the library. You can't see any any book details, but I'm glad to see a library in any movie. <laughs> and and uh, what's what's uh, what's even better? I think they work quite well with the library because it doesn't look like they just uh, uh, fill the the shelves with you know with just some books, or uh, all the books do not look similar. But you can see some series over there in some of the shelves. In other shelves, there are some random books standing one next to each other to another. Uh, so it it really looks like uh, like a library of a real person. You know, uh, you know what it looks like. Uh, it looks like uh, the design described by uh, Bokhers in his Infinite Library. They were also, uh, it, and it also looks infinite. It doesn't. Uh, you can see sort of the the next level, but it looks like it goes on for, uh, uh, forever. And uh, Bokhers' library was also made of infinite. Uh, uh, regular polygons, and you could go up and down and left and. Yeah, and that's something I wanted to to discuss uh, in a bit more detail. And uh, uh, that's uh, that's a book uh, that's held by uh, by Garni Halleck, uh, one of the uh, major characters of the of the Dune uh, uh, series. And uh, as far as I remember, <laughs> he's a master of arms uh, for the House of Treaties. And uh, uh, in in the in the movie, he is holding this book. Uh, um, uh, when they are arriving to to Arrakis to Dune, and uh, we try to enhance the image just a bit, and and the scene is is really dark. You can't see the book uh, in the scene, but well, you can see the book, but you can't see any detail. And um, uh, one of uh, one of the uh, uh, members of our team, uh, Friedrich Sommerfeld, was uh, kind enough to uh, try to decipher the. Uh, the text in the book, and well, I, I, I when I look, when I first looked on the screenshot, I, I thought that it may be German, which is interesting for the you know future world, uh, uh, ten thousand years from from uh, current moment. But still, the, as I mentioned, there are there are influences of old languages. Old languages are used uh, as as secret languages, secret languages of different houses and families uh, of uh, of the uh, empire. So here, here we have uh, a German book, and I, 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 I probably, sh I don't think that's a blooper because, uh, for example, in Game of Thrones, uh, I once found uh, uh, some English book uh, related to nineteenth-century uh, British history uh, on 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 one of the shelves in uh, uh, Tyrion's room. <laughs> well, I obviously didn't, didn't have to be there, uh, but in this case, I don't think it's a blooper. I think it's uh, it's some reference. It may be some reference to uh, Gurney uh, uh history. Uh, so what? That's what uh, Friedrich uh, uh, wrote to me. Uh, so what I got so far: this passage appears to be from the book True Christianity, originally published in four volumes. It was uh, later expanded into six. This quote might be from the sixth volume. Uh, there is also a Russian translation, of, and Pavel will share the links uh, to the book and uh, to, to all, all that stuff uh, from from, 90, uh, from 1735. Uh, and the translation was published in Halle, where uh, Friedrich lives. So <laughs> it's, it's another nice connection to our team and to our re reality. Uh, and there is a copy of the book on archive.org, uh, so uh, it's it's obviously not the same copy as as the book uh, that is shown in in the movie, but uh, you can find find it uh, there. And Pavel will also share the link to exact passage that that is 
uh, shown in this scene uh, of the movie. So that that was a nice catch, and uh, uh, many thanks to Friedrich for 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 that. Uh, uh, I'm very impressed because I can uh, barely read uh, a few words from here, like "ich." Yeah, so, I, also, uh, I also found "ich," and I was okay. That's probably German. <laughs> sorry, I'm losing power. I'll be back in like ten seconds. Okay, okay. I'll probably continue. And uh, yeah, here is here is this book. Uh, 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 another another edition for from for, for the same of the same book, and uh, here is uh, uh, the front front of, uh, of the uh, Russian edition of uh, or Slavic edition of this uh, book. And uh, uh, moving forward, Pavel, are you ready to continue? Yep. Perfect. So uh, there are also some books uh, used by the. Uh, natives of the Arrakis planet, uh, the, the Fremen, and uh, they speak a different language, and uh, uh, um, this language is Chakopsa, which has some, as far as, as, far as I remember, it has uh, Arabic influence, and, uh, oh wow, I forgot to, I forgot to check. I should have checked and printed out the uh, info. Sorry for that. Pavel, can you search uh, 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 what was the influence for, for Chakopsa? But anyway, uh, in the book, uh, uh, the uh, the uh, Fremen people are descendants of uh, Zen Sunnis, uh, sort of Zen Islamic uh, 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 religious people from from different planets, and uh, uh, and it, it is it is stated that their uh, linguistic uh, uh, heritage is mostly Arabic, uh, but with uh, some other influences as well. Uh, we can't really see uh, what text uh, uh, in in which script uh, text is written in this book, and uh, uh, it doesn't seem in any way either. Arabic influenced or uh, influenced by Gallup. Uh, so I guess they just used some random book because it's uh, it wouldn't be seen in much detail here, and well, that's obviously okay. <laughs> but uh, so the, the influences are French, Romani, Hebrew, Slavic, Greek, Persian, Turkish, Sanskrit, and Arabic. Well, okay. that's a lot, and then and the name itself is an adaptation of a uh, name of a Caucasian language. So, yeah, yeah, a huge mix of uh, of all this stuff, and uh, here are some some. It's just it, it, it all uh, this scene uh, lasts for I don't know thirty seconds or something, and there are several people praying, and they have these prayer books. Uh, I can't say anything special about the bindings uh, because you can see them in much detail, but uh, I, I guess that's just random books. They decided to use it props, and uh, obviously that's that's okay. Uh, by now, it it, uh, it seems that the props team worked pretty well. There are there are no real bloopers here. Not 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 really much material, uh, but but still even. Even within this uh, limited space, in other projects, you can see like <laughs> dozens of bloopers, <laughs> the same amount of books, and uh, that's a great use of book. And uh, once again, Paul Paul Atreides is using uh, his uh, uh, projector, and uh, uh, well, the book is obviously useful uh, in this in this episode, and you can see. So uh, Gallic, I, I suppose, in this uh, in this episode, uh, in this uh, in this scene, uh, not not much detail, but uh, probably if you follow the link to uh, to the website of uh, oh, I'm blanking David David J. J. Peterson, uh, you will be able to read a bit more about Gallic because he usually publishes publishes all information. And uh, for example, with uh, some of the languages from. Uh, from Game of Thrones, uh, like the Thraki or something like I, I think you can even study them in Duolingo uh, nowadays or through some other applications. So uh, that's something you can you can really do and uh, uh, some some more garlic there. And uh, so returning to the uh, topic of uh, uh, other languages, uh, there are also 
in this movie. Uh, there are also uh, two more spoken languages, so uh, warrior language of uh, Harkonians, war language of Harkonians, and uh, war language of Sardukar, uh, the army of the emperor, emperor uh, of the of the uh, galactic emperor, and uh, they are. As far as I understand, they are also developed by, by the same person. They are subtitled in the movie. Uh, you can't understand the thing uh, uh, when, when they are talking. And uh, there should be uh, another major language uh, uh, in, the, in the movie, uh, which is the language of uh, Tlilatsu, another race in the, in the uh, universe. And uh, the language is, is, uh, is called Islamayat. Uh, and uh, also some Islamic influence there, and uh, it, it 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 wasn't used here in this movie. It probably will be used in the second the chapter because yeah. because uh, there probably should be some uh, Tleilaxo characters uh, are there. If not in the third movie, or maybe in the series that are already announced and uh, that will, that will be dedicated to uh, the. Uh, Origin of the uh, Bene Gesserit, uh, and uh, yeah, and and the the other language that was developed uh, uh, for this movie is a sign language, uh, a sign part of the war language of Atreides, of the House Atreides, and uh, I, I saw some discussions where people uh, were deciphering uh, the the gestures made by the characters. Uh, in in the movie, and uh, they were deci deciphering them following the tutorials posted uh, 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 on on the website. I will share with you, and uh, that's interesting how it works, and how the community works, and how many people <laughs> find a lot of fun in in all these uh, uh, processes. Uh, and uh, one more language I wanted to sh to sh to to mention is is uh, Mandarin uh, Mandarin Chinese. Uh, uh, that's used by Paul and uh, Dr. Yui, uh, Dr. Velka Yui, uh, who is described in, uh, in, in the book as a person with uh, uh, Chinese heritage. And, uh, well, he is obviously in the movie as well. Uh, and here is, here is another uh, scene from the movie, and we are almost uh, at the end of uh, uh, this part of our talk, and uh, probably at the end of our uh, live stream. Uh, here is uh, Lady Jessica in some dream of Paul's, and uh, she has some script on her face. And this uh, uh, script is, uh, uh, I will share the link uh, uh, some moment ago. And uh, this, early, yeah. yeah, this script is... Uh, as as, uh, uh, as it appears, uh, that's the famous litany litany of of fear or against fear uh, that that plays a major part of uh, of the Dune. Uh, uh, how do you say canon? Dune uh, mythos, and uh, well, uh, it's it's repeated several times throughout the movie, and uh, obviously it, it plays some parts uh, in in this scene as well, uh, but it's. It's really strange to see it. Uh, are, there, are these all alphabet? Uh, so can you just remember which shape? So this is this is Chakopsa. This, this is this is written in Chakopsa. So he, here it is. It, it is. It's not Gallic. It's Chakopsa. It's language of Fremen. It's uh, um, a language of Arakis. And it's uh, it's uh, usually it's quite different uh, uh, from Gallic. And, uh, uh, and that that's something that Pavel uh, Pavel shared a bit, a bit earlier. Uh, letter from uh, uh, Dr. Velka Yui to Paul Atreides, uh, and uh, this probably is uh, a handwritten uh, Gallic and the scroll of paper. And uh, the last few last objects uh, in the movie, it's, it's a library of sorts in the... Um, how do you call it? Meteorolog me meteorological station, uh, climate climatologist station, uh, abandoned station, and uh, there is this library which is which looks more like uh, a collection of ledgers of something like that, which which is reasonable for a for a scientific uh, location. Uh, but once again, it seems quite fitting, and I, I also like how how it was produced and. Uh, uh, 
uh, how the prop department works uh, uh, works through this scene and uh, uh, prepare the object. And that's something like 30 minutes or 40 minutes before the end of the movie because, well, after that, um, no books or bookish objects or anything like that. And, uh, uh, well, there is a bit more action there. <laughs> so, uh, Pavel, if you will pick up for a moment, I will uh, switch off uh, the images and we'll return to our so normal So we're, we're probably skipping the news again, am I yeah. right? Yeah, 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 <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely uh, skipping the news. So we'll, we'll, we'll probably have more news uh, in two weeks and we'll uh, broadcast them all then. Yeah. Will you be at the exhibition? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to uh, to Leiden here to Bukunstdorsen in Leiden in the Netherlands, and I invite everyone to uh, to go there on the sixth or seventh of uh, November. It's ten days from now or something, and uh, so it's not this, but uh, the following weekend. And if you are in Europe by chance, please come over. And uh, it seems that uh, the event should be pretty packed. Uh, uh, they just shared the floor plan yesterday, I think. And uh, uh, the number of, of uh, participants and uh, souls, it's uh, all, almost as usual. I, I see that some of the participants uh, took over a bit more space. Uh, but, uh, well, that's, that's understandable because some, some couldn't come. Uh, some people from, from the United Kingdom couldn't come because of, well, obviously, Brexit and COVID. Uh, uh, these things don't help each other. And uh, and uh, and uh, and our ourselves as well. And uh, yeah. So, so so you thought about uh, certainly recording there. That that's yeah. Uh, that without doubt. But what about broadcasting for there from there? Or is it too <laughs> too much? <laughs> uh, we'll see how it goes. Because uh, I I thought about it, and uh, well, I probably can can. Uh, 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 rig some sort of setup uh, uh, that will allow us to uh, broadcast at least to one platform, at least to Facebook or YouTube. I'm not sure about both because it's much harder and uh, uh, I'm not sure how, how good the connection uh, Wi-Fi connection would be bad there. Uh, uh, definitely how good the uh, mobile connection mobile internet connection would be there with so many people um, uh, staying there at the same moment, being there at the same and moment. And also inside a church with thick walls and everything. Yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. doesn't help. Yeah. yeah, a couple of years ago, I streamed from there, uh, just you know, with uh, with free camera, and uh, it sort of worked, but the quality wasn't the best. So probably we will we will do some you know short uh, 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 stream from there and uh, discuss some things, but uh, then I will shoot uh, a lot of videos and we will discuss them during uh, one of our live streams or, uh, I don't know, podcast episodes, something like that. Probably live streams. Why Why keep them for, for a podcast when you, we can do it live? Like freestyle! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, there is there is a comment on, on YouTube. You guys have some research about the book quest. Um, well, I yeah. know who I know who to ask. Uh, um, that that that's a big topic. Uh, I know a couple of uh, book archaeologists, basically, uh, who specialize in uh, uh, Russian and Byzantine book clasps, and uh, I could possibly contact a guy who specializes in. Uh, Azerbaijani, Georgian, and uh, Ottoman books, and he he also wrote wrote a, a monograph on book class. But uh, as far as I know, there are no big uh, books dedicated to clasps of all kinds. There are uh, uh, monographs on clasps from diff uh, different cultures. So if you have some particular question, I could uh, look around. Yeah, so uh, David, or I guess David, because it's it's Brazilian name, I, I, it shouldn't be David, uh, probably. No, uh, it but, says Vali. But yeah, it's it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's the same person from uh, from, from Brazil, so it's, it's oh, yeah. definitely David or David. Hi, David. Uh, I, can, I can pass your contacts to Pavel, or I can, you know, connect you to, and uh, probably Pavel will uh, give you some contacts in Russia if you want that. 
Um, if if there are no more questions at the moment, uh, we'll probably uh, finish our stream. It's a bit longer than we uh, are usually, you know, ready to do it. Uh, and our, and our it's standard shorter than the last than the last time. time. <laughs> than the last <laughs> one time. Yeah, yeah. It previously, okay, previously it was ninety minutes, but uh, uh, yeah, today it's uh, one one hundred and five minutes. Our uh, one hour and. Uh, 45 minutes yeah so uh i hope you liked it uh, if you have any any future any any additional questions uh, you can uh, leave a comment we will try to answer them or send us uh, a personal message or something uh, once again i invite you to check the links uh, under the video and uh, join us on facebook on youtube on instagram on discord by the way you can ask your questions there as well and uh, please consider joining as a patron on patreon uh, this is really important to us and we appreciate every dollar euro uh, pound uh, uh, any other uh, piece of money that's coming toward toward our project and if you're ready to to you know to uh, spend more money monthly helping ibook binding uh, to to create this uh, our podcast well that's even better and uh, uh, we'll stay for for a moment uh, until the stream ends everywhere. And uh, and uh, David is asking me in the meantime if I'm going to Leiden. No, I'm self isolating. I have a well founded uh, COVID paranoia at the moment. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. But anyway, thank, thanks to everyone for, for staying with us and for watching. Thanks for, uh, for your comments. Uh, Ian, thanks a lot for, for all your contributions. It was a great yeah, pleasure Ian, to, Ian, to have yeah, you on, like our, on yeah, our stream. I, I hope you will join us in the future. 